Hey folks, how's everybody doing today? Thank you for coming back for another Let's Look At. Um, if you have not seen Batman Year One yet, um, strap yourself in and uh, and let's go through this puppy together. If you have, um, let's go over it again because it's a classic in the uh, world of comic books. Um, it's definitely one of my most memorable experiences when I first um, really started to put my effort back into um, into creating stories, into creating characters, into you know trying to develop a style for page layout. Um, I remember going over this book and being really um, I was really taken back. When I first looked at Batman Year One, I was really taken back by David Mazzucchelli's, um his uh, his usage of space and his layout uh, for every page. His design in his layout is um, is like the perfect combination of simplicity and complexity. Uh, I believe he's doing it all in brush strokes too. So. Um, so Frank Miller wrote this back in, I believe, 1980, mid-80s. It was published in uh, 87. It was, it was part of a run uh, of ongoing Batman comics uh, through DC Comics anyway, just titled Batman. And I think year one was a series of issues that kind of back-cataloged uh, a historical time in Bruce Wayne's, um, uh, in Bruce Wayne's history you know, um, detailing how he became the Batman. And this book is obviously what influenced Christopher Nolan's uh, Batman Begins, and you can see a lot of ties uh, to this book drawn in that movie. Anyhow, Frank Miller wrote it. David Mazzucchelli was the uh, artist Frank Miller chose for it, and um, and David Mazzucchelli wasn't he was pretty new on the scene as a DC artist, as far as I know, too. Uh, looks like he does all the work, like I mentioned, in brush. So let's go through. If you have not seen it, like I said, you're in for a treat. If you have, it's, uh, it's about time we go back and review this. And uh, recollect on how awesome it is. Some iconic artwork people probably recognize. David Metz Kelly's fantastic. And uh, you'll see just what I mean when I say complexity meets simplicity. And this story, I haven't read it in a while, but I know it, it focuses a lot on... Um, like, it opens up in the perspective of Jim Gordon. And then, uh, you know, it kind of crosses paths with Bruce Wayne along the way. But as you can see, the uh, the art style, I mean, it's, it's a fairly complex um, series of shots, but the way Mazzucchelli breaks it down, the way he... Um, the way he moves the panels around uh, the wording provided by Frank Miller is uh it's done in such a it's done in such a solid way i guess that's the best way to put it you know everything is laid out exactly where it needs to be your eyes being guided around the page ever so i think i need to start doing these videos kind of like uh maybe taking these pages into photoshop and drawing over top of them showing kind of like as much as I want to pay attention to the art in these books and you know stylistic choices and stuff my big focus I think on going through all these different comic books with you guys is to really focus on you know above and be all uh, above and excuse me above everything I want to focus on the storytelling and the design and the page layouts because this is really where you dump all your um, 
all the style that you acquire, all your personal flair that you put into your artwork. This is where it all culminates in a, uh, you know, in a perfect collage of images that uh, follow a script, right? I love this shot. There's another great example of just great usage of space as he brings your eye down here to Bruce Manor there, or Wayne Manor. You got the car door open leading you right to this last panel. Same with the steps leading up to Wayne Manor. Fantastic. Now, before I was even drawing comic books or designing my own pages, when I was thinking of how to design pages, man, did I ever look at this book. I think the first book I ever worked on, there was a detective story um, embedded in it. And, and every time I... Well, every time that you know the story would shift to the, those characters, the detective characters, I remember reverting back to this comic book specifically for a lot of influence. Crazy, eh? When you're structuring pages, you know just how much space you have to provide for the dialogue. It's such a big part. Eventually, you know, some of you have probably been following me for a while now, and you, you can see that uh, I do a lot of lessons uh, demonstrating how to do art, all that stuff. Eventually, I do want to get into some form of a, you know, a page layout breakdown, and, you know, we go through a few different pages, and we we try to spot the similarities, as different as a page may be from the next there are uh, there are elements that are in every single one of these pages, right? That kind of guide the eye along, that pace the reader, stop on one panel, move quickly over another. I love this comic book so much that the story is great. Frank Miller is fantastic. If you haven't read any of his stuff, it's pretty good work, pretty good writing, um, and just. I love how Mazzucchelli leaves a lot of um, negative space. And this story is super intense. If you're into, like, origin stories, this is pretty much the ultimate Batman origin story. The colors are pretty badass in this, too. I think these are the original colors done there in the 80s. Maybe, no, it's probably been retouched. Of course it has been. This is great. Look at this page. I swear, these... Oh my god. Bruce Wayne could kick through a tree. That's just how strong Batman is. That's what makes Batman so fun. He's like a... He's like the size of a football player or a Viking. He's got the suave of a CEO and businessman. And under it all, he's he's freaking Joe Rogan. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I think Mazzucchelli's using... He's probably using a, a marker and brush to do all of this. Or he's just using straight brush. I love the heavy shadows. And I love the black silhouettes, you know. That's the beauty about a comic page. You can use a lot of black. It doesn't always have to be crazy hatching, and I really try to keep in mind the f the fact that you know people only spend so long looking at comic book pages, or is the art in comic book pages? You know that it's a uh, it's important that the art looks a certain way, and that the consistency's there. Like it's got to look good, and it's got to look consistent. It doesn't have to be over the top. If your style and consistency is over the top, then then it has to be that way. But 
I don't know if that necessarily gives the artwork any more allure or, you know, or even, um, you know, place it higher on a scale for marketability or it all comes down to good story. It all comes down to consistent artwork, a style that is pleasing, you know, ultimately for you, the creators, it's got to be something you're able to actually put out into the world, you know? Anyway, um, we're going to leave it on this beautiful panel here of Brucey walking through the city. Uh, if you haven't gone and added this book to your uh, collection, you definitely must. You can get it digitally. You can order it online. Uh, the whole entire, I think it's four or five issues, but they're all sold uh, as a graphic novel now, just entitled Year One, uh, written by Frank Miller, illustrated by David Mazzucchelli. So go check it out. It's uh, one of the key comic books to have in your collection. Great artwork, great storytelling, um, great writing across the board. Okay. Uh, if you don't believe me, go check any uh, top 100 list. You'll find it on there. Okay. Have a great day. Hope you enjoy it. I'm going to go make another video right now for, uh, for next week. All right. We'll talk to you soon, people. If you haven't already, please make sure you, uh, excuse me. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe and uh, click this little link right down here to do so. Check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, Twitch, all at Christian Wolf Art. Okay, friends? Be well. I'll be back with more art for you soon. Bye-bye.